Later on the show, we will be chatting uh, with the management of Mindtree, Devashree Chatterjee, who is the CEO of the company. So stay tuned for that ba- uh, big uh, ET Now earnings with ET Now interview that will we will be having on the show. And that's uh, Mindtree that is definitely in focus in today's trading session. But let's move on. Let's get on board our viewer queries today. And the first one is coming in from Manoj Krishna. He is asking about Adani Ports. He has 150 shares of Adani Ports that he's purchased at 750 rupees per share. Wants to know what to do with this particular counter. Kunal, what's your view on Adani Ports? Well, I think the stock uh, on a broader term basis looks very attractive. I think you know, it showed uh, good strength from last, uh, you know, 12, 13 month lows of uh, 250 or 260 approximately from there on. It's done pretty well. But it's just that the last, uh, you know, couple of uh, you know months, the Adani group of stocks have been in the thick of some negative news flow. So that could probably hound the stock for, uh, you know, some more time. Possible that over the next, uh, you know, couple of months, the stock may remain more sideways. Just about meander the 700 pivot point plus or minus 50 odd rupees. So I think that could be the larger trend. So I think from a short term view, I don't see major uh, you know action or trend coming on to the Adani group of stocks. But probably from a longer term view, if these stocks happen to come back and specifically for Adani puts this stock happens to come back to say another 10 to 15 percent lower from current levels closer to 630, 600 odd levels. I think that could be a very good level for you to enter and specifically from a longer term view becomes a good buy at those levels. All right. I think this also answers uh, Neeraj Kumar's question. Uh, Neeraj has uh, 300 shares at levels of 670 of Adani Ports and he has uh, a, a view of about six months or so. All right. Sudeep's got a question uh, for you, Rajesh, and this one's on granules. He bought the counter quite a while back, uh, at least uh, I would think uh, a couple of years back or more, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, because he's bought at levels of 107. He's asking if it's still a, a long-term investment bet, a good one, and to add at the current prices. That's what he wants to know. Adding at this point of time, I would say wait for some correction. But yes, one can hold for a longer-term horizon because the prospects are very good. Ibuprofen and metamorphine both are doing well. In fact, ibuprofen prices have been gone up like anything across the world and the demand is too high. There was buzz sometime back in the market that the company, uh, the management is going to sell out, which the management categorically denied. But uh, uh, this was just a buzz. Uh, uh, operationally, the company is doing very well. Demand is very high. I would say uh, stay put for a longer term horizon. Anybody uh, willing to buy should uh, wait for a correction of maybe 5 6% or 10% from the current market price. And buy for a long term horizon, uh, maybe of uh, at least 9 to 12 months, where one can see a uh, upside of 25 to 30%. All right, this one is coming in from Sapna. 10 shares of DMART is what she's bought at 2,900 rupees per share. Wants to add some more. Uh, uh, she's asking your advice on that, Kunal. What should she do? Or uh, can she add some more shares of DMART at current market price or wait for some correction? So, Cheryl, uh, if you remember, uh, you know, we were having this discussion yesterday as well uh, on DMART and I was mentioning that uh, how the stock has a very typical tendency of going through a breakout and then a range bound action for, uh, you know, at least a span of three to six months. We've seen that happening three times uh, or thrice for DMART over the span of the last one and a half, two years. So, I, I uh, would be of the same uh, uh, belief that the stock is going through a very similar kind of a consolidation at current levels uh, and if you can try and take opportunity of this consolidation not just buy them on one go but look at staggered buying for dmarts may say starting at current levels of 3300 to uh, uh, assuming the stock dips and comes back to 3200 3150 levels i think that would be the second level where you can look to average it out further so it, it's buy from a longer term view but from a short term view i believe that the stock may go through a time correction and you can take an opportunity of trying to average uh, your holdings on dmart at every possible dips 
Okay, uh, we've got a question from Neelamadaba on LIC housing finance bought at levels of 468. Neelamadaba is asking how long can uh, that investment be held? And this is a bit of a tricky question because I, I suppose it is uh, to do with your time horizon and you got to determine how long you hold it. But I'm going to interpret that as can you hold it for the long term? Uh, Rajesh, what do you have to say about this being a long term investment? a proxy play on real estate sector as such and for a retail investor who wants to uh, take the opportunity of earning something from the real estate which is full of issues uh, pertaining to inventory or corporate governance or something or some uh, other thing it's better to play housing finance companies and uh, LHC uh, is a one of the best companies I would say because of its parentage it gets funds at a lower cost than AMS are good NPA has been stable and even on the value parameter is trading at a PA of 10 times that gives it a good dividend yield 1.5 times adjusted price to book value. I think that's a very good stock one can even go ahead and buy with uh, at least at least a 40-50% uh, upside from the uh, current market price in the next 12 to 18 months. Okay, this one is coming in from Tarun Gambir. Wants a short term view on Ludlow Jute. Uh, Kunal, what's your view on Ludlow Jute? How does it look over the short term? Well, uh, apologies, Sherry, don't uh, I mean, track the stock, so won't be able to offer any comment on it. Rajesh, will you be able to speak on Ludlow Jute? Do you track this particular counter? Uh, Sherry, fortunately, these jute companies are based out of Calcutta. And uh, I do track them very closely uh, from the last so many years. So let me take that. Uh, Ludlow is doing very well. Uh, in the past, jute companies were not doing well. But in the recent past, in the, by recent past, I mean in the last 18 and 24 months, things have been very good for the entire industry as such because of packaging demand, which is going on in the agriculture sector. Uh, jute prices have gone up like anything else are running at 100% plus capacity. They are setting at a whole lot of land, which has got immense value. So even at this current market price, which where we have seen a quite a good run up from uh, their lower uh, prices, still there are a lot of uh, hopes left. But one uh, thing I would like to mention is these counters are very highly illiquid counters. At this point of time, there are volumes, but since they have small equity capital uh, and most of it is being held by the promoters, the liquidity is very low. Unless one has got an investment horizon for trading, I would say avoid for investment. Yes, one should can buy. Or even hold. The uh, investor is holding. I would say uh, continue holding the stock. All right, uh, not a counter that we hear about every day, uh, Ludlow Jude there, uh, currently trading with cuts of about half a percent or thereabouts. Uh, we've got a question from Ramesh and this is on Punjab National Bank. This is for you, Kunal. Uh, can it be bought at the current levels? Uh, and uh, he's, he's wondering whether 4041 is looking to be a good support price. He's wondering whether he can hold, uh, buy and hold for the medium term. And what would your target price be for the medium term? So I think PNB looks to be attractive, uh, placed at 4041, uh, which is again a support level, not just in terms of price. Uh, I think the earlier low for the stock was around this 38, 39 mark, uh, but it, it was more like a you know a two-day low where the stock uh, touched that level and then bounced back quite sharply. Uh, but I think 40 approximately seems to be a good support. It's also uh, a support of the 50-day moving average as well for PNB. Uh, you know, when I did a relative uh, strength study for uh, many of these sectors in this uh, one month, one and a half month of consolidation on the index, it seemed to be that the PSU banking stocks had a bit of an edge uh, you know, to the private sector banks. Uh, uh, and I think in that aspect, it's possible that these PSU banking stocks could uh, you know, come back into you know, fervor sometime uh, in, in the near term. So I think in that aspect uh, and, and the fact that PNB is corrected 10% from its recent swing highs, uh, I think should be a good an attractive opportunity to be bought at current levels. So I would suggest a buy at current levels of 40 odd and from a medium term play, uh, watch out for two levels. Uh, very One of them is 44, 45. So if the stock manages to touch back to that level, uh, it could result into a big breakout for PNB and then targets open up for, uh, you know, around 50 to 55 over uh, the time from three to six months. So I, I, I'll uh, you know, take it step by step. Uh, initial targets of 44, 45, and then if the stock manages to break past above those levels as well, you can revise the targets higher to almost 50 to 55 range. 
Okay, this one is from Kunal Kaushik, wants a long-term view on KPIT technology and what sort of a price can he accumulate this particular counter. Rajesh, uh, what's your view on KPIT technology over the longer term and do you think, uh, can you advise any price that uh, Kunal Kaushik can look to accumulate this counter? Uh, I think Mac has uh, seen a point and got burned in the last uh, quarter numbers and even in this quarter, the first quarter numbers. Uh, uh, reported by some of the companies, one or two larger cap companies has been doing well. And I think IT is going to do well. But I don't think KPIT is some quarter where one should take a long-term horizon and the current scenario, it would be a better to uh, think about either Infosys or a Coforge or even TCS. Uh, but best bet, I would say, would be Infosys uh, in the large cap and persistent system in the smaller cap. Still, if somebody wants to uh, buy KPIT, I can, I say one can buy uh, with, uh, with a maybe a target of 10 to 15 percent appreciation from the current market price. But I said I have different choices. Okay, uh, this next question is for you, Kunal. Uh, Jayant Romala wants to know about Loris Labs at the current market price. From what I can see, it's still trading above all of its long term uh, moving averages and it's gained over five times over the last one year. Uh, is there potential upside from these levels or would you wait for a correction? Correction has not just happened, just not happened for Loris Labs, frankly. And uh, add to, uh, you know, uh, one of the other data points, Alex, which you mentioned, the last time the stock was below its 200-day moving average was in uh, uh, April 2020. And from there on, it's just not looked back and uh, you know been consistently above its long-term moving average in fact uh, at current juncture as well where the stock is placed at 656 60 levels the 200 dma for example is just about uh, around this 400 mark which means it's been consistently trading around 50 percent and more uh, uh, higher from its long-term average so it's a stock which is into a fabulous uptrend now uh, you know it's very difficult to categorize that when would the uptrend get over and when would you see uh, you know a round of profit booking or some sort of a correction creeping into these names but then i think as a as an ideal opportunity you should wait for uh, you know some sort of a short term correction because of the you know the steep nature of uh, an uptrend for a stock like loris labs i would expect that the stock would go through uh, at least another 10 to 15% correction if not more over the near term so would suggest uh, that you wait for a correction i think closer to 600 mark or below that is where i believe that you should start buying the stock not at current levels okay this query is from kostuk gule saying that he has 27 shares of anupam rasayan which he's purchased at the ipo price at 555 rupees per share he's saying although the chemical sector is booming but this small size company has high pe ratio so should i hold till the next result or look to exit rajesh what's your view coming in on anupam rasayan uh, reply like in the question only the valuations are too high it was recently listed of course it's a chemical based company doing the entire sector doing well but the valuations are very high i would say switch to some other better chemical names uh, for example balaji mines would be a very good buy at this point of time or even deepak nitride would be a very good buy so i would say uh, switch this money from anupam rasayan to either balaji mines or a deepak nitride Okay, we've got uh, Ram Shah, who's been particularly patient, uh, has been asking the same question for two weeks. Unfortunately, we missed it. Uh, I'm taking it right now. Thank you so much for your patience. Chrysal and Ikra are the counters that uh, Roms wants to know about. Uh, I'm taking this to you, Rajesh. Uh, this is a very long term perspective, 10 years. Would you get into these two counters for 10 years? Uh, unfortunately, no. Uh, I won't recommend these counters at this point of time for 10 long years because one, there is no liquidity, the valuations are high. Uh, and the uh, more problem is the fancy towards these kind of stocks has been quite waning in the last few years. Uh, a better option in the BFSI sector would be a Bajaj Pencil or a uh, NBFC like AB Capital where one can have exposure to the BFSA sector. Although this is not in a BFSA sector, but other rating agencies, I don't think it's the right time to enter in the stock. And especially for when you have a longer term horizon. Right? Okay, this one is from Abhishek Ray, wants a short term view on Z Entertainment. He's bought the shares at 217 rupees per share. He wants to know what can he expect in the shorter term. Kunal, Z Entertainment, what should Abhishek expect from this counter? In one of the you know, few stocks which had shown signs of potential, but somehow 
it's been an underperformer you know the breakout which uh, you know z showed i think in the month of may and in june around this 220 mark was uh, a very strong breakout but somehow the stock has uh, you know fizzled out uh, you know it's not gone through a corrective phase or a sharp price correction but it's just about taking its own time to consolidate <clears throat> and uh, you know just hover around this 210 to 20 range for the last uh, you know few weeks so i would sense that you can hold on to the stock because of the previous breakout and the attempts which the stock is making consistently to break past about this 220 hurdle and uh, start an uptrend i would uh, you know uh, suggest a wait and watch uh, on z if the stock manages to break out yet again uh, above this 220 mark i believe that the next set of possible targets for the stock at least in the near term could be in the tune of 240 to 250 so I would suggest a hold on z entertainment as of now Gentlemen, we're making great time. We've taken about 11 queries so far. Let's speed it up a little bit more in the interest of time. We've got uh, next one on Symphony Limited, and we've got Sangeeta asking whether it can be entered into at the current price. What are the charts indicating? Kunal, this for you. So uh, corrected from 1500 to 1000, 1050. Uh, I think 1070 is where it's currently trading. Uh, and you know, uh, the only concern with this kind of a name is that it's a bit illiquid. uh in a, as a stock so that's the only catch with the stock like symphony otherwise the trends are quite strong uh, even though the stock has gone through a mean reversion or retracement process but i still believe looks very attractive so i would suggest a buy at current levels but as i said that the only concern is the with the liquidity of the stock okay this one is coming in from sarvanan saying that he has 40 shares of maruti which is purchased at an average price of 7000 rupees per share in 2017 uh, he foresees 15 to 20% growth only for the next 2 years is it worth the wait for 6 years so that it can gain about 20% in the stock should he dilute how should the one handle these uh, stocks like these in such a market condition rajesh a lot of questions coming in from sarvanan but what's your view coming in on maruti it makes sense to hold on for the next 6 years We are very bullish on this. Uh, in auto space, if somebody asks uh, in a four-wheeler space, it's blindly Maruti, nothing else, because 50%, more than 50% of the passenger car market is with Maruti. They have uh, very good new launches being lined up. The product has been taken well. They have good lot of service centers spread across the country. The numbers have been good. Gujarat plant is going to good, do good. And the best part is it's still trading at a much discount to its 52-week all-time high that was around 10,000 rupees. Yes, it's one can definitely buy this stock, hold this stock for two, three years down the line, or even more. Okay, uh, coming to you again for this uh, next one, uh, Rajesh. Ritesh wants to know about ease, uh, easy trip planners. Uh, would you suggest that uh, this is a good bet for the long term? See, long term, I won't comment on this because see, uh, during the pandemic, the hospitality sector was the uh, worst one to be uh, the worst affected sector, I would say, and uh, it's not it's still out of that. But for trading purposes, yes, Easy Trip is giving very good volumes, very good trading opportunities for a longer term horizon. I would say, uh, don't enter into that. Go for some uh, better hotels, name like. Indian hotels or East India hotels, which are trading at a very cheap valuation, and if you want to be in the hospitality sector for a longer term horizon, these are better bets. Okay, this query is coming in from Manohar. He has hundred shares of Power Grid, which he's purchased at two hundred thirty-four rupees per share. He wants to know that what should he do currently now with this particular counter? How are the charts looking for the longer term for Power Grid? Kunal, what's your take coming in on Power Grid? How are the charts looking? No doubt, it's uh, below his buying price. But what should he do? Well, I think if you can make a switch, uh, that would be a much better decision. Uh, I think Power Grid has been one of the few stocks which has remained absolutely docile and, you know, sideways for quite some time. Uh, you know, this this range of 230 to 40 has been a very nagging range for Power Grid, and uh, you know, and, and typically and inherently it's a very low beta name. So, you know, you have to be very very patient enough for the stock to break past above those resistance hurdles, and even if it does, you know, it takes a lot of pause in between as well. Uh, so I would suggest that rather than looking at uh, you know stocks like Power Grid, if you want an alternative, then look at uh, you know something like Tata Power. I think at 120, 125, Tata Power seems to be a much more attractive bet, a much high beta stock relatively uh, with respect to Power Grid, and the potential as well looks to be far more stronger. Uh, I think if uh, the near-term trend uh, uh, you know breaks out for uh, Tata Power above those 130 levels, 
you could be looking at a possibility of at least a 150 to 160 over the near term. So I would suggest a switch from Power Grid to Tata Power. Just Dial looking particularly strong in trade today, up 3.4%. And in fact, it's had quite the run over the last year as well. Uh, the question is, uh, would you buy at the current level, Sanjay is asking, uh, for the next six months, uh, Kunal? Well, I would suggest a buy on Just Dial. Uh, you know, even though uh, you know, the stock uh, has, is, is very, very high beta in nature, but you know, the breakouts which the stock has shown time and again, I think seems to be a very solid breakout now i understand that over the near term last few days the stock has been in the uh, you know thick of news flow but even irrespective of that purely on the basis of charts the last three months of price patterns the recovery from those 450 400 levels for just dial over the last uh, you know few months i think it gives an indication that the the, the trends are reversing for the stock and you could see a, a much more stronger and robust up move for the stock the only catch with uh, which i said earlier is that it's a very tip, it's a typically very high beta so if you can absorb those kind of uh, you know high volatile moves and you are okay with it then i believe just could be a good bet Coming from Devya, Apex fo uh, Frozen uh, Foods purchased at 256 rupees per share, about 50 shares. Good uh, to sell at current market price or should hold on to this particular counter, Kunal? What should Devya do? Well, I think uh, you can uh, sort of look to hold on. I think the stock is after this, uh, you know, steady run in uh, the month of June end in July. I think is going through a bit of a sideways price action. Uh, trading at 385, 386 if I'm not wrong, but the last one month, one one and a half odd month, You've seen a rally from 250 levels to 400 plus for uh, in Apex Foods. So it seems to be a good stock, but just as of now, it, it, it seems to be going through a consolidation. So if you can hold on to it for at least another week or and maybe try and average it out further, say closer to 360, 365, if the stock happens to correct to those levels, it could be a good opportunity for you to uh, you know, take out some good profits on the, the holdings for Apex. Rajesh, sorry to keep you waiting. Fundamental view is being sought by Rajat, uh, sorry, Rajat on uh, Kajaria Ceramics. Uh, how do you think it will perform in the medium term? I think uh, the entire industry is going to do well, whether it is Kajaria or Somani, I think one can very well go ahead and buy because once this entire country goes from lockdown to unlock, these uh, uh, real estate ancillaries, I would term them as, would uh, see a big jump in their revenues and margins going ahead. But the only issue with this Kazaria or so many is the low liquidity in the stock. So if you are willing to buy for a longer term horizon, yes, it's a very good price to enter into the stock. And I would suggest a buy for investment purpose. For trading, I would say avoid because there is no liquidity as such. Okay, this one is from Sri Kutan on uh, Fortis Healthcare, holding the stock for at uh, from the price of 246 rupees per share, wants to hold it for medium term, wants to know what should he do, should he go ahead and uh, book uh, losses or average more Kunal? Just to hold on uh, to Fortis, uh, I think it's just about going through and uh, I would say it's an evolving chart, uh, you know, the last, uh, you know, four, five months, we've seen good pickup of volumes for Fortis good acceptability from the market participants as well and which is why you've seen more trading action uh, you know, coming into Fortis as compared to what it was uh, over the last two, three years as well. So with the fact that the stock is going through a bit of a makeover or a change uh, and new participants and new market participants are getting into this name, there is a possibility that you know the stock would probably uh, you know, restart its longer term uptrend, something which was a miss for the stock uh, in, in the last few years. So I would suggest a hold on Fortis and if you uh, you see a correction, say closer to 200 to 20 zone, that should be a good opportunity for you to average it out further. Yeah. All right. Uh, on that note, unfortunately, we're completely out of time on this edition of uh, the query segment. I'd like to thank both the guests. Thank you so much, Kunal, as well as Rajesh for taking the time. And to the viewers that we missed out today, apologies. We have uh, commitments that we have to meet. 
uh, and thank you so much for tuning in. You know, Mindtree is a stock that has been in focus uh, all of today on account of its earnings and uh, uh, what a performance it is show showcasing on the, on the, on the charts today, uh, up as much as 7-7.5% seven, seven at one point on account of the earnings. In fact, we are joined by uh, the management, Debashish Chatterjee, who is the Chief Executive Officer of Mindtree, is joining us right now. Thank you so much, Mr. Chatterjee, for taking the time. Stock is currently up 8.4%. Uh, we've seen a fairly strong quarter with the highest ever order book and profit growth has been over 8% this time around. What according to you led to this performance? The overall demand environment has been uh, fairly strong. We have been uh, 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 fairly uh, bullish on the demand and we have been working with uh, our clients. The client conversations give us the confidence that uh, uh, you know the demand scenario has uh, definitely picked up. And in line with the demand, we also have been able to close a, a significant uh, sizable order book. If you look at the composition of the order book, there were some renewals. But when you do the renewals, you also tend to get uh, uh, some additional scope uh, along with the renewals. And the second thing is, uh, you know, there are uh, the, most of the new deals that we have got. Uh, one of the things which is uh, common among all these deals is we are trying, we are tending to see more multi-year uh, opportunities that uh, have uh, uh, you know come to us so that's about the order book in terms of uh, profits uh, you know our uh, pat pat has been uh, fairly stable uh, though the ebitda has uh, 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 gone down slightly but we have been able to manage the pat because of our uh, you know efficiently using the the treasury function and there has been some uh, treasury gains and uh, that's why you see the the absolute pad has gone up and the overall pad has been steady at 15%, which is fairly good from our perspective. Good morning, Mr. Chatterjee. This is Cheryl also joining in. Your margins have actually dipped by over 100 basis points in the quarter gone by. Share with us the breakup of this uh, margin decline. Also, more importantly, uh, share with us what's your margin outlook given the high attrition levels. Also, some of the cost benefits actually could wane going ahead. So, in terms of margin, uh, bulk of the impact that we had in the margin is uh, uh, the 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 hiring that we have done in this quarter. And as I said, the because of the demand that we see, we have been also getting ready to uh, deliver for the rest of the year. So we did ramp up our uh, hiring, uh, both in the laterals as well as the freshers in uh, this quarter. Uh, and, uh, you know, the what you, de what you see in terms of uh, margin is a bit of cost of hiring and there were some, uh, you know, uh, employee payouts as well. Uh, but... Uh, uh, in terms of uh, margin, I can only say that there will be, you know, headwinds from time to time. But uh, our overall margin story uh, remains intact. We have been uh, saying that uh, we want to have a we have a sustainable margin story, and that still remains intact uh, for the full fiscal. So you will see some aberrations uh, in a in a couple of quarters, but overall for the fiscal, we still have a very good program and very good. Uh, 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 fairly good confidence in terms of uh, sustaining our uh, margins. And, uh, you know, specifically with respect to attrition, uh, it, it is a, uh, you know, in the, it's an industry phenomena and uh, uh, we also are uh, part of it. But uh, from our perspective, we do a lot of initiatives within the organization to ensure that there are sufficient engagements with our mind to minds. And as you do that, we also try to control attrition uh, you know, it's not just, uh, uh, it, it, it's just not the, uh, uh, you know, it's it's a factor of many things when you talk about attrition. And uh, one of the things is the nature of work that we do. Most of the work that we are doing for our clients are uh, uh, fairly advanced digital transformation kind of work. So, you know, when uh, when people join Mindfree, they would like to be part of those engagements. So I think that will also excite, will help us in terms of uh, managing the attrition. Right. Mr. Chatterjee, one of the highlights of this quarter gone by has been the order book, the highest ever at $504 million. And the demand environment seems to have been strong. When do you see this uh, translating into revenues and how is the deal pipeline looking going forward across all of your service lines and verticals? So in terms of uh, 
demand i would say that uh, you know our uh, strategy of 4 by 4 by 4 is working out uh, fairly well and what i mean by that is uh, uh, the reason why we went for a 4 by 4 by 4 strategy is to stay very focused in terms of which industries we want to play in which geographies and what are the service lines in which we want to build capabilities so when you talk about the order book and the pipeline that we have we have a robust pipeline as well uh, it's pretty much falling in line with our overall strategy the service lines that we are talking about customer success data uh, cloud and enterprise it we see a very good demand across uh, all those four service lines and even the order book is a reflection of the same thing so uh, from a specific industry perspective uh, Uh, i would say this uh, quarter has been a broad based growth across all the industries uh, the even from a geography perspective it has been fairly uh, broad based so our intention is that the fact that we have got a focused 4 by 4 by 4 strategy we want all the growth happening broad based yeah in one quarter maybe one particular industry will do better uh, like you know uh, we have been seeing a good traction in terms of uh, cmt as well as uh, rcm comms media technology as well as retail consumer goods manufacturing uh, fairly well but uh, this quarter we have seen a very good traction in uh, bfsi and uh, even travel also has been uh, you know showing a decent growth uh, in this quarter as well as the last quarter so overall we see a broad based growth in the verticals in which we play and, and that's exactly working out to the strategy that we have adopted All right, Mr. Chatterjee. Based on what you're saying, then can we assume or can we expect a strong double-digit growth in uh, the current financial year? And earlier, you did mention that margins look sustainable. What range can you tell us? You will uh, uh, have margins uh, achieved at over the course of this year? Well, I think uh, you know it's uh, difficult to just call out everything uh, sitting in the first quarter for the full year. But uh, I can say that. Uh, the first quarter is a good indication of what's going to come and if the demand continues the way we are seeing especially clients have increased their uh, discretionary spend in uh, certain pockets uh, i feel that uh, our uh, growth is definitely going to be double digit growth for this fiscal and uh, i think uh, you know we should be able to say see a industry leading double digit growth in terms of ma- margin the story remains intact we have been talking about a 20% uh, 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 margin uh, ebita for uh, you know that that has been our commentary and even for this year we are still uh, very confident that we should be able to uh, sustain that uh, uh, margin but that's for the full fiscal all right now mindtree has said that the focus uh, will be on uh, filling white spaces like the focus on healthcare verticals and uh, you were also targeting uh, an entry into japan uh, the middle east uh, the asia pacific expanding your geographical footprint what is the progress here yeah so uh, you know definitely you know when you have a strategy the strategy is in uh, execution mode right now but we also need to look at the future so what you described just now like in terms of other geographies newer geographies Uh, we have to do step by step so at this point of time uh, some new geographies are in the works it will still take some time for us to uh, get into execution mode but healthcare is one area where we started incubating healthcare in the last fiscal and that's why we started calling out healthcare separately and we want to stay focused in healthcare and we are building out a pipeline in that uh, practice as well and the other important thing where we have been investing in terms of white space you heard about the acquisition that we have done for uh, uh, next which is uh, more in terms of industry 4.0 and uh, iot we feel that's a huge opportunity in the manufacturing space so that's also something that we are uh, very uh, uh, bullish on and we are going to stay very focused in terms of creating more opportunities and more solutions around industry 4.0 and iot and which is what we call as edge to experience solutions for our clients Thank you so much Mr Chatterjee for taking the time congratulations on a very strong set of numbers in the first quarter stock gaining over 8 and a half percent on a day when IT as a pack is doing incredibly well uh, we're slipping into a short break more on the other side do stay tuned
Oh, oh, oh.